Hi folks, this is Bill from AT Makers, and today we're going to talk about AT jacks. We're going to talk about what they are, what they're used for, and how you can make them. Let's get started. Now, if you're not from an AT background, you may not understand what an AT switch is or what an AT jack is. Uh, it is one of the very few things in AT that is common. Uh, basically, everybody has agreed that whenever we want to activate a switch or we want to have a switch activated device, uh, we're going to use a 1 8 inch or 3 and a half millimeter plug on the end of a single pole, single throw switch. And that works on anything from a, an expensive uh, proximity switch like this candy corn, all the way down to a 3D printed switch that, that we create. They always have a 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter, that's the same size, uh, so a 1 8 inch mono plug at the end that you can plug into a matching jack. As far as what you can use them for, you can use them in anything from an $8,000 speech generating device uh, down to something simple like this uh, uh, Big Mac right here. You can plug a switch in and control it. Uh, and also all of the switch adapted toys, everything that we create, we always make with a jack. So if you look at our, our uh, Curious George or any other uh, Jack in the Box Turner, it's got a standard AT jack. Uh, when we adapt things like the fart gun, uh, we put a, a three and a half millimeter jack uh, right here so you can plug in a switch and activate the toy. So that's really what they're used for. And it's amazing the number of things in AT that you'll find that have a standard AT jack on it. So today we're going to show you how to make your own jacks. These really are our first step when we're working with a new, uh, a new STEM program. We'll very often make this one of our first projects because it teaches basic soldering and it's not a waste of time. Right? What you get out of it is a large number of jacks, many of which are usable, some of which are, are not on the first try. But these can be stockpiled, they can be saved so that when you need to adapt a toy, they're already made and ready to go. We'll make dozens of them at a time and that way when we have a toy drive for Christmas or something like that, we're already ahead and the, the project is kind of half done because the jack's already made and wired up. Now what I'm not going to spend a lot of time on on this video is how to solder. There's lots of videos out there on how to solder. Personally, I really like the ones done by Colin Cunningham. I'll make sure that there's a link to that in the description of this video and also place a card on the YouTube version. But there's lots of places to learn how to solder and there's probably people in your STEM program that already will know how to teach you how to do that. This is really about how to wire up this type of jack so that you can have something really useful for your AT department. So here you see a fairly standard AT switch. This is a candy corn from AbleNet. It's a proximity switch, um, kind of a high-end switch. Uh, you'll see here is its, it's uh, plug in white. And you'll notice that this is a standard 3.5 millimeter plug, but it doesn't have the ring on it. It is a mono plug. It has just a tip and a sleeve. Over here we have a standard aux cable, the kind you might find uh, when you're hooking up your, your speakers or, or your headphones, especially like older headphones. Uh, newer headphones will actually have another ring in it here. But this is the most common kind of stereo um, aux cord that you're going to find. Now the reason that we're using these stereo plugs and jacks uh, in our uh, maker exercises is these are what's available now. It is very hard uh, to find mono jacks. Uh, when you do find them, they're much more expensive uh, than the stereo jacks uh, and plugs uh, that you can get just about anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire our jacks so that um, any plug we, pl we plug in will act as if it is a mono plug. And the way to do that is we're going to make sure that the ring and the sleeve are always shorted together. And so that will make it act like no matter where the contact is, whether it's contacting here or it's contacting here, uh, it's always going to act like this is connected together and the tip is separate. Here you see three different types of jacks, all of which can be used in AT. On the left is a free hanging uh, jack that will hang on the end of a cord. Uh, this is great when you're working with uh, stuffed animals or things where there's not an easy place to, to mount a jack. Uh, this one in the middle is a mountable jack. You'll see it has a uh, a nut that you can use to tighten it onto a hole that you cut in a piece of plastic on the, the toy or anything else you're adapting. And the last one over here actually is solder free. You place the wires into these, these screw down terminals and that will actually wire it up without any soldering. Now, 
this looks like it would be a fantastic tool, and it is for testing, and it is for um, for really quick uh, temporary solutions. But long term, uh, this will always cause you uh, pain because you're going to get shorts, you're going to get wires pop out of these, uh, and it's not a good long term solution. It, I don't want to. I don't want to put it down. It has lots of great uses when you're trying out a prototype or for whatever reason you want to uh, make something very quickly and you don't have a soldering iron handy. But when you're adapting a toy that's going to be delivered to a child, uh, you don't want to leave it with this type of a jack because over the long haul, uh, you're going to have failures and you're going to have frustration and this isn't worth the hassle. So here you're looking at the terminal side of the panel mount jack. Um, there's a couple things to note here. The first, there are three places to connect your wires. Uh, that's because this is a stereo jack, like most of the ones you're going to find these days. Uh, so you're going to have a ground, a left, and a right signal. Uh, in our case, we don't want that. We actually want to wire this as a mono, mono jack. So we're going to combine the ring and the sleeve lines, which are these two right here, uh, and then connect the tip line, which is over here, uh, separately. And the way you can remember this is that if you, uh, if you look at this with the long pin straight down at 6 o'clock, the uh, tip is at 9 o'clock, and the ring is at 3 o'clock. Okay, so you're going to short together 6 and 3 o'clock and run the other wire to 9 o'clock. Now, if you're using solid core wire, that is wire that has only one strand in it, um, the easiest way to wire this up is to run the wire through the hole in the terminal, uh, bend it over, and then we'll solder that to it. I do recommend that you start on the inside and run it to the outside. That just makes it easier, uh, especially on the, the other types of jacks, the, the free-hanging jacks. It makes the, the wire come out the center of the jack, which is just handy. So we'll put some solder on our tip. We will bring the iron in, add some solder, and we're good. That's all that takes. At this point, we'll take a pair of flush cut pliers and trim this off. At this point, we'll slide a small piece of heat shrink tubing over that connection, and we will heat it with a flame. And that one is done. Now it's time to do the second wire. And as you can see, I have connected um, the second wire to both of the two remaining terminals. I've actually run it up through the long terminal and then into the short one at 3 o'clock. Uh, now this is very doable uh, in uh, with, with single strand wire, with a uh, solid core wire. It is very, very hard to do with uh, stranded wire. And so I'll show you an alternative method, but this is a perfectly fine way to do it if you're using solid core. So then all you have to do is solder each of your two points, just like you did the first one, and you're done. Once again, we'll take a pair of flush cut pliers, cut that close. Now we'll put on a piece of heat shrink tubing to finish the connection. Sometimes instead of solid core wire, you'll be using stranded wire like this. There are lots of good reasons for this, including the fact that especially this silicone wire is very flexible, and that's great to use inside of stuffed animals. Now, the problem is that you are not going to push this through these tiny holes without going crazy, so there is an alternative method that we recommend uh, when you're using stranded wire. This method involves tinning both the terminals and the wires and then bringing them together to connect them. So first, we'll put some, uh, some solder on the terminal. Then we'll put solder directly on the wire. Now we're going to trim this wire to make it just a little bit shorter. We're going to hold the wire to the terminal bring in the soldering iron, let it melt the solder, and then hold it there while it sets. We'll slide on our heat shrink, heat it up, and that wire is done. 
The second wire works the same way. We're going to tin the terminals first. Now we'll tin the wire. Now we'll hold the wire so that it hits both terminals while we melt the solder and they stick in place. Remember to hold the wire in place after you move the soldering iron so that it can cool. And at that point, that solder joint is done. It's connected to both. A little wiggle to make sure and we'll put our heat shrink tubing on. And that jack is complete. Next we're going to wire up this freestanding jack. The uh, process is very, very similar, but there are a couple extra steps. First, it's good to understand how this works. You've got uh, a shroud that will unscrew here. And then inside of that, you've got the same three terminals in the same configuration, actually, uh, plus this little plastic protector. Uh, what this does, it keeps the, it keeps the um, wires from hitting this metal cover. Uh, so you just need to set that aside and remember to put it on uh, before you close things up. Uh, the cover actually has this spring uh, to relieve the tension on the wire. Uh, it can fall out, but it's pretty obvious how it goes back together. Uh, the order when you put it back together is that you, uh, you first put on the plastic piece and then this piece here. So we're going to wire this one with stranded wire, which means we're going to tin all of the terminals. I'll just do them all at once here. Then we'll tin the blue wire. Just make sure it's well coated with solder. We'll get the red one as well. I'm going to shorten this wire a little bit for the outside one. We'll hold it up against the We'll hold it up against the terminal and bring our soldering iron into it. Hold it in place. And then we're good. The red one needs a little bit of trimming as well. Probably not as much. And we'll hold it in place and bring the soldering iron in. Make sure it's connected to both. Hold it in place while the solder cools. And you'll see that's a good connection to both. So now we're ready to reassemble. First, we're going to put the the plastic over the two wires, and we may have to manipulate them a little bit to get that to go on there. And it's mainly meant to protect the metal sleeve, so that goes on just like that. Now we'll put on the metal sleeve, twist it on, and we are done. So at this point we've made three different jacks, uh, the solid core uh, gold version here, the uh, stranded core gold version, and the free hanging uh, jack there. We haven't tested anything yet, so I want to show you how to do some basic testing on these. Uh, and then I'll also point you in the direction of an automated tester that we came up with because we were making so many of these jacks. So to perform this testing, you'll basically need two things. You will need a multimeter or some kind of a continuity tester, and you'll need an aux cord. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug the aux cord into each of our jacks one at a time. And then we're going to run some tests on the, the five different connection points that you see here. So the first test is very simple. It's just that the ring and sleeve should always be connected. That's what we did when we made this a mono connection. 
And the tip should never be connected to either of the other two. And they are not, so this passes. Okay. The second thing we're going to test is that each of the leads goes to either the tip or the ring and sleeve. So here we've got the, the blue wire connected to the, the multimeter, and we're going to test it against the ring and sleeve, and we won't get anything. But if we test it to the tip, we get a connection. And that's only, there you go. Okay. So it doesn't connect on the ring and sleeve, and it does connect on the tip. So this is our tip. Our convention is that when we find the tip wire, we go ahead and tie it in a knot. And that's mainly because on the other kind of jack, on the silver jacks, you can't quite see which one is the tip. Now we're going to do our last test that's necessary. We're going to test uh, the red wire and test it against, it should not connect against the tip, and it doesn't. And it should connect against both the tip and the sleeve. And that works. So while that kind of testing is great for making one or two, if you're making 50 or 60 and you want to test them all quickly, uh, we do actually, we learned that that was very difficult. So we actually developed a small tester using a Trinket M0 and uh, MicroPython, or Circuit Python. And what it does is it lets you plug in your jack. So you plug the cord into your jack, and then you take your two wires from your leads and put them on the alligator clips. And when you hit the button here, it will actually test them and give you back a green blinking light if it works and a red blinking light. For example, if I took this off uh, and reran the test, it would come back and give me a bad test flashing red. So this is a separate project uh, that we're going to write up and, and make available. But if you are doing uh, a lot of these, make sure you have some way to ma handle a lot of testing. So that's all there is to it. It's a very simple project. It actually is very useful and is a great stepping stone for somebody just getting into making. Uh, you learn soldering, you do something useful, and you learn something about assistive technology. If you'd like to join us on other projects or work with us as an AT Makers affiliate, please join us on atmakers.org or on the Facebook group. And as always, good luck and have fun.